Do you get stuck trying to find the charges on individual ions when given a neutral ionic compound? My name is Leia Fish from LeiaForSci.com and in this video I will show you how to break down a neutral ionic compound to find the individual ions and their respective charges. In the last two videos, we looked at how to use the crisscross method to find the ratio of ions for a neutral ionic compound. In this video, I will show you how to use the crisscross method on a neutral ionic compound to find the charge of the ions in there. Let's review the crisscross method. If I have Mg2+, and I want to combine it with Cl-, I need to find the ratio of ions that will give me a neutral compound. This means I take the positive 2 from magnesium and bring it down to the chlorine, giving me 2 chlorides, and the invisible 1 from chlorine down to the magnesium, giving me 1 Mg. This gives me a neutral compound of MgCl2. But if you're given MgCl2, you can also use the crisscross method and reverse it to find the charge of the individual ions. This means the invisible one for magnesium is brought up to give me the charge of the chlorine and because chlorine is the second atom in the compound it's going to be negative and that's because the cation always precedes the anion. The two from chlorine is crossed upward to give me a positive two for magnesium. This gives me the following ions. Mg has a charge of plus two and two chloride ions and I get the two from here showing me that I have two Cl's but each one just has a charge of minus one. This gets a little bit trickier when you're applying it to polyatomic ions. For example in K2SO4 it appears that I have a number two and a number four to crisscross but you have to recognize that SO4 is actually a polyatomic ion and that four refers to the number of oxygens covalently bound to sulfur rather than the number of ions in your compound. So when you see polyatomics, be sure to recognize where those numbers come from and don't break it up if it should be in the polyatomic compound. Recognizing that sulfate is SO4, I have to envision that there's an imaginary one after the sulfate and that's the number I use in my crisscross. That means I bring up the two from potassium after the sulfate for a charge of negative two and the one from the sulfate up to the potassium for a charge of plus one. This tells me that my molecule is composed of two potassium, I get the number two here telling me two ions, each with a charge of plus one or simply positive, and one sulfate with a charge of minus two. This is a little bit trickier, but still simple enough. Now, if you want to verify, you can always refer to the periodic table to help you recognize if you're placing the correct charges for your monoatomic ions. And the trick is as follows. Group 1 has a charge of plus 1, group 2 plus 2, group 3 and 3a not transition is plus 3. Then from the left we have 0, negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. But what if you see an example like this on your exam? Some unknown metal forms the compound MCl2. And M is not an atom, it's an unknown metal, and you have to propose the charge. You can use the same crisscross to figure this out. We have an invisible one after the metal, so we bring it up for Cl minus. We have a two after chlorine, so we bring it up for a charge of plus two. And this gives me M plus two and two Cl minus. That was simple. But what if you get something tricky like MS? If we start out with a crisscross method, it looks like you just give each atom a charge of one, which would look something like this, M plus and S minus. But if you refer to the table, you'll realize that's not the case. Sulfur is in group six and should have a charge of negative two. So how do we get the charge of negative one? Remember that the charge just gives you the lowest whole number ratio. And that means that the metal and sulfur have a ratio of one to one. But if sulfur should really have a charge of minus 2, then you have to multiply both atoms by 2, and that means your metal is once again M plus 2, not M plus. This trick is also useful when you have a transition metal in your compound, given that transition metals can have multiple charges. For example, if you see Fe2O3, you can't immediately recognize the charge of iron, given that it can be plus 2 or plus 3. But using the crisscross method lets you use the number after oxygen to verify that your charge is plus three. 
and the 2 after ion confirms that oxygen is minus 2, something you expect from the table, telling you that this ionic compound is composed of 2 iron, each with a charge of plus 3, and 3 oxygen, each with a charge of minus 2. If you're not sure, verify this by multiplying the coefficient with a charge. If we have two irons, each with plus three, we get two times three for a charge of positive six. We have three oxygen with a charge of negative two, giving you three times negative two for a charge of minus six, and plus six and minus six cancel, confirming that this comes from a neutral ionic compound. Be sure to join me in the next few videos where we'll tackle all the different rules for naming ionic compounds. So what do you think? Do you feel confident enough to conquer these chemistry topics on your own? Thing is, this short video was just the tip of the iceberg. There is so much more to understand in chemistry which cannot be taught in just 5 to 10 minutes. But luckily, I have prepared an exclusive video training that I am offering as a free gift to you. Trust me, if you are serious about chemistry, you can't miss this one. To claim your free gift, visit layofersci.com slash chemistry gift. As a subscriber, you will receive exclusive email updates, including information regarding new videos, study tips, resources, and more. The URL again, layofersci.com slash chemistry gift, all one word. A quick favor, if you like this video, please click the thumbs up. If you know anyone else struggling with this information, share it with them too. They'll thank you for it. I'd love to hear from you, so please leave a comment below and let me know what you like most about this video and of course if you have any questions. You can also say hi on Facebook by visiting me at facebook.com slash Psst, still here. Don't forget to subscribe.